My name is Łukasz Walczak, and I'm the maintainer of the React Native Paper library. We've just released a stable version of the library, and today I would like to show you what exactly has changed and what's the difference between Material Design 2 and 3. This video is a supplement to the article I wrote for the Callstack blog and linked in the description of this video. You can find there a lot of useful information, for example, about the support for version 4 or a migration guide to the latest version. Let's start by taking a closer look at the new utilities and new components available in the React Native Paper 5.0. Firstly, I would like to present you three helpers which can be really helpful in the process of configuring and tailoring the theme in a smooth and hassle-free way. Let me show you how to generate a dynamic theme color schemes based on the source color. In the documentation under theming tab, you can find a section called creating dynamic theme colors. Once you type some color in the input, for example, red, the tool generates color scheme palette preview along with their codes, which then you can copy and paste into the application. I will do that right now for both modes. Firstly, light. Now I will switch to the dark, copy and paste. In the next step, you need to combine already pasted colors with the theme. Then finally, you can pass the theme to the theme provider. Okay, done. So let's take a look at a very basic sample sports app, which I prepared for this demo. By using a dynamic theme, you can easily assign different colors to the different themes. We can check if the red theme was properly applied to the team red. Looks correct. It also worth mentioning that the dynamic theme works in both modes, so switch to the dark mode. Looks properly. With the Adapt Navigation Theme Helper available in the React Native Paper 5.0, you can easily adapt navigation theme to match the theme of your app. The Adapt Navigation Theme function takes a React Navigation theme and returns adjusted React Navigation theme using the colors from the built-in React Native Paper theme. Let's check how it looks in the practice. As you can see, React Navigation themes in both modes are provided and passed into the helper. The output are adjusted, light and dark theme. To control the theme for the entire application from a single place, we combined both React Native Paper and React, Na React Navigation themes for both modes. Then, combined theme can be passed into the paper provider and navigation container. As the result, React Navigation UI elements such as header bar or tab bar follows color scheme from the paper. All right, how about a custom paper theme? Don't worry, helper accepts, accepts it as well, as long as the theme is compliant with material design. Check the documentation for more details. To make theme fonts changes easier in terms of modifying individual variants or adding completely new ones, the existing utility called Configure Fonts comes in handy. The most common use case is replacing the font used throughout the whole application. When it comes to configuration, you firstly need to install and load the font. In my case, it's Noto Sans font located in the local assets directory. Next, with the assistance of the React Native Paper helper, you can pass the predefined font as a font family into configure fonts config, which results in applying that font to each text component in your app. Okay, true time. Let's switch the toggle and check whether the new font was applied. Okay, looks correct. New font was properly applied to the text components. Okay, that's all when it comes to the helpers. Let's talk some more about the new components in the latest React Native Paper version. Segmented buttons is a completely new component introduced in the latest version. However, it can be understood as a refined version of toggle button. It allows you to select options, switch views, or sort elements. On the presented examples, example inspired by any music player, segmented button can be used to switch between songs and albums. 
However, the component is, is, is intended to support both single and multi-select variants. For example, multi-selected segmented buttons can be used to filter by price range when searching for a restaurant. Apart from the presented examples, the components provides a lot of customization options. I encourage you to check them out. Tooltip is a component displayed upon tapping and holding a screen element or component. It presents an informative text label identifying an element like its functionality description. Right now, I will be holding my finger on the three dots icon button. And after two seconds, the tooltip should appear. Indeed, we can notice the tooltip saying more option appeared. It's one of the component that was missing in the library also in the previous version and about which there were often questions. So it was high time to introduce it for both material design version. So let's check how it looks on the previous material design version. Very similar. Drawer collapsed item is newly created site navigation component that can be used within the drawer, representing a destination in the form of an action item with an icon and optionally label. According to the documentation, that components works best on the larger screens and should be mainly used on tablets or desktop layouts. So I will switch, switch to the iPad. It should have from three to seven main destinations. The active destination can be indicated by a fill shape in a contrasting color. So you can notice that I'm currently on the first one presenting all the examples. Let me switch to my favorites. Based on the fill shape indicator, you can observe that the second destination was activated. And the last thing for today in our showcase app, which you can download for iOS and Android, are the biggest differences between components in Material Design 2 and 3. Probably you've already noticed that you can switch between the Material Design version using the toggle located in the drawer. The biggest differences between versions you can observe in the up bar, buttons, and bottom navigation which I will shortly explain. According to the material view, there are now four types of up bar, center aligned, large, medium, and small, which is the default. Each of them has larger default text and height. Similarly to bottom navigation, there is no drop shadow by default. Buttons. From the perspective of visual changes, buttons receive fully rounded corners, taller height, and inner text is sentence case. Button is one of the several components which received new variants or modes, such as elevated or contained tonal. Floating action button received boxier shape with smaller corner radius, so no more circles. What's more, New large size was added along with the variants based on the color, such as primary, secondary, or tertiary. In terms of floating action button group, we refresh the animation and spacing between inner items. In the latest version, bottom navigation is taller and doesn't have a shadow. Active states are represented with field icons and a contrasting field shaped active indicator, while in active states are represented with an outlined icons. To sum up, the stable version of React Native Paper brings changes in helpers such as theme adaptation, dynamic theme creation, and font configuration. It also adds new components to make developer life easier, segmented buttons, tooltips, and collapse drawer item. Thank you for watching. I hope you will find React Native Paper version 5 useful. If you have any more questions, feel free to check my article on the Callstack blog or reach out to me directly via the official Twitter page for the React Native paper. I will be more than happy to answer all your questions.